I think people need to learn how to talk to people. Right. Keep talking to them, no matter what their interest is. Sales training, time management, personal efficiency, closing, negotiating, personal finance, and money mastery. These are all things that I have done successfully in my life that I'm like, hey, this worked for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you, but right. I know it's going to work. I know it worked for me. JB here in the house, the Wolf's Den. I got a great guest today, the one you've all been waiting for. Everyone keeps thinking is, like this. Is, yeah, people keep thinking that like we have this like ongoing feud, like it's the rumble in the freaking beach jungle here. Uh, but dude, I'm really actually excited to have you here. Thank yeah, you for coming. And I really appreciate you coming. Yeah, thank Because I think you. that, listen, all I want you to know is that my whole alchemy is I want to try to extract as much as I can from you about how you go out and train salespeople about yeah, your life. Because yeah, I yeah. want to give this massive to the audience, right? Yeah, well, everybody, wants to know, everybody wants to know who's the better salesman, right? That's, that's what they keep saying. <laughs> I so. don't know, you so know. It depends who you talk to. You ask exactly. Jordan, he's going to say he is. <laughs> and, I, you know, uh, listen, I, honestly, I think that I, I love to sell. Yeah. But one thing I realized pretty quickly is I'm, even better at training salespeople than I am. At, I mean, I, I'm a great salesperson, yeah, but I yeah. really excel when I something about. I love doing it. Like, yeah, I, I don't like sales at all. I love training people. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, tell me. Let's start in the beginning. So, yeah. when did you start selling? Uh, when I had to. So, what was the, I what, what was your first? Had, what was your first job? Like it was, a, a it formal was, it job. Was a, it was a, what was my? Was it a clothing store? How old? I was paid six percent on a twelve dollar tie. I was seven, 16 years old. Okay, so I'd make. Whatever that is, six percent of twelve bucks. I mean, okay, I seven dollars and twenty. 70, no, seventy <laughs> seventy cents. cents. Yeah, seventy two cents. Yeah. Yeah. I hated okay. That job. And wh and how'd you do it? Were you good at it though? No, I was terrible. You weren't good at it. I was terrible. And it was we awful. The only time I was good at sales was when there was urgency on my part. Like I had to get, I had to sell it. Like I sold furniture. I was terrible. I got fired. I was sold clothes. I, I was fired from that job. Uh, and. There was one other job. I think it was a refinery job. I, I lost that. I lost six jobs. But the the only time that I ever sold anything successfully was a bunch of fish that we had caught, red fish, red snappers. They caught hundreds and hundreds of them. And I was you caught yourself. I was on a supply boat out, okay. out in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, off the coast. I was doing two weeks on, two weeks off, and I was I was helping the cook. That was my job, right? It was a, it was a labor. It was a total labor boat. Three of us on the boat. We'd bring supplies out to the oil rigs. I've never told this story. And, and uh, we, one day we drop lines over the boat in about 120 foot of water. And we would drop lines and it would have 120 foot line. Not, not, not a fishing pole. A line. Right. A, a rope, dude. With like, like 80 hooks on it. And you just wait. You sit and wait. <laughs> right. Do nothing. And then you go over there and you pull up 60 fish. Every line had sixty fish. Really? So, like, where was this though? This is uh, south of New Orleans. Okay. So we we catch I don't know three four hundred fish. We couldn't even keep them all. Right. Snapper about this big. So I tell the guys I'm like, hey guys, can I have your fish? I mean, we can't eat it all. So we put it on ice. And on the way home, when we came in, uh, like eight days later, I stopped door to door. This is how I got my started my career. Door to door. I was selling fish. To homes? To, 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 no, to, to restaurants. To businesses. God, okay. To, to state farm agents. Hey, hey, guys, I got some fish. Right. It's fresh as shit right here. Right? You know, I did the same job, by the way, but with boxes of frozen steak and meat. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. well, I didn't have enough ice. I didn't plan or I didn't right. know what I was doing, so the fish was going bad. Got it. And I'm like, I have to sell this shit. Right. Otherwise, it's going to go so bad. What you, so what was your rap? What, what was your pitch back then? Hey, guys, I got fish. <laughs> I got fish. That was my fucking. Stick. I'll give you really good that, prices. They're about my to straight. I don't tell them now. They're gonna go bad. <laughs> uh, I got fish. I just caught them. You want them? And, and that—that's how I still sell today. By the way. Okay. Like, there's no, there's no, you know, it's very direct to the point. Find out if you're interested, and then I move on. So if someone's not interested, in other words, I, yeah. one of the things I know about, I, I mean, I, you know, listen, I, I, I did a little bit of checking, right? Yeah, not yeah, that yeah, much, yeah. right? And by the way, you know, the reason I don't do checking is because I don't want to. Like so many, you know, this people steal so much shit out there, right? Uh -huh. I mean, there's all these false gurus and people, the experts of the of the hour, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't make it a habit of trying to f go through other people's stuff. I feel like then I'll adopt it as my own, yeah, either yeah. rightly. Not, sometimes yeah. I even realize that you took it from someone else. Exactly. Right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so well, my shit's so good, dude. If you watch it, you will use it again. <laughs> what's, you can't what, not use what's it the second time. Well, look, really? Okay, good. Well, oh, what's, no, what's the stuff about being unreasonable? Like when you say, if you want to just be unreasonable, like not stop. Yeah. But what if they don't want it? What's the what's the what's the fine uh, line? Oh, you Wait. saw the unreasonable. You're, you're like follow, the follow up. The 
No, 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 no. I mean, like, okay, so you have two types of people. You have buyers and non-buyers, right? Like, what do you mean? No, I don't believe that. I I think they're all buyers. You think everyone's a buyer? Every person, every human being you meet is going to buy something. Whether they They might not buy my fish, but then they're going to buy insurance or they're going to buy groceries. or They're all buyers. But what, you're selling fish, though. In that case, I was selling fish, but that does not make them a non-buyer. Of fish, though. If they that day, well, that moment. Right. No, that if they second. don't. If they don't. My point is, technically, every buyer's, every buyer's a buyer. Okay, so you all don't... I'm looking for is money anyway. Every seller's looking for something. They're okay. looking for money. They don't want to keep what they have. They're looking for money. So you don't think? Okay, so I think so, every buyer's a buyer. Slow it down for one second, here, right? Slow it down for a second. You speak. You speak almost as fast as me. Slow you're on the down. Red Bull. I'm not. Question. Okay, yeah, so if yeah. you're a salesman, young salesman out in the field, let's say you're selling yeah. insurance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And let's say you knock on someone's door, and say, "I'm not interested in insurance." I understand. Would you keep pushing and pushing and pushing? No, I, no, I totally understand. But 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 I do. I don't believe that they're not. Not interested is an interest level. Okay. Not interested is better than before you hit that door, and they said they weren't interested. Not interest. No interest is a level of interest. Okay. Like if I have no coffee in my house. I'm talking about coffee. Okay. Zero, n- none is a quantity. Time for the wolf to do his thing. I'm going to sell you something that you want, need, and got to you got to have these. Ready? This little thing here, you see how cool. Look, this is like it's blown from the space shuttle, <laughs> right? It's really futuristic looking. This is what they use on Star Trek, I think, right? These are actually state-of-the-art head earphones, earbuds, right? These things are so cool from a company called Raycon. Check it out, all right? I'm telling you. These things are so comfortable. I have a problem. Listen, I, I, you know I'm a big lover of Apple, right? But I have problems with the, the, the earbuds hurt my ears. These are the most comfortable earbuds, and they sound amazing. I've actually done the side-by-side sound test. There's no difference. They sound amazing. They really do. They fit beautifully. Check this out. Like this. See? Now, look, this blue. I mean, they're really futuristic looking. They sound awesome. You got two. And by the way, here's the other thing. Hello, I can't hear you now. Right, anyway, no, these things are awesome. Let me tell you, setting it up, linking it with your phone, right? Having it link up, right? You know what you do? You open the thing up and it's linked. I've never seen anything like that. Talk about the definition of user-friendly. When they have that in the dictionary, this is the picture you see, user-friendly. You literally open up. I was like, oh, how do these things work? They just open up the thing and it worked. I swear to God, it actually worked. They sync perfectly with your telephone. They sound so great, all right? And they're the most comfortable. You feel like you float with these things, all right? I do my workouts with them. I walk around, you know, just all day to talk on the phone. They're amazing, Amazing, all right? So this is Raycon, all right? You get, and now, by the way, these things are incredibly fairly priced. They're really low price. I'm talking like, I think, I don't know the the price right here, but it's really, just trust me. Just check, just go to the website and check it. You won't believe it. They're like half of what you think they would normally be. And the quality is twice as good as anything else out there. That's how powerful these things are. And I'm telling you, you gotta just, there's nothing more than the sound and the feel. And I like things that look cool. You tell me this doesn't look cool as shit, all right? Come on. That is some cool shit, all right? Right there, you got your plug in to charge it. I'm telling you. Great stuff, all right? And you get an additional 15% off because you're watching this show. All right, so let me tell you exactly how you get that additional 15% off. You go to Raycon, R A. Y-C-O-N dot com, all right? And then you put in slash wolf, okay? Slash wolf, and you're done. You get 15% off. Just just give these a shot, all right? I'm telling you, I'm sure you probably have more than one set of of earpiece. Everyone, right? You you want to have two or three. I buy two or three of these. I have three sets, by the way, just so you know. But you have to have one. Give it a shot. Believe me, you won't be sorry. Raycon.com slash wolf. This is a good one. Oracle NetSuite, ridiculous company. One of the best software designers for the business market out there in the world. And here's the deal, okay? I love this company because what they do is they design things that are user-friendly. They make it easy for you. Listen, as a business owner, this is for business owners, you know, people that manage money, numbers, people, right? You're an accountant, CFO, whatever, bookkeeper, right? If you don't know your numbers, if you're not on top of your numbers as a business owner or as a COO, your numbers are on top of you. They're crushing you, all right? You have to know your numbers, have access to them, and you have to have them 
delivered to you in a way that's easy to follow, that makes sense. And what the problem is, is there are lots of great programs out there to do this in a business, but they typically all come from different companies. So they don't talk to each other very well. Like one of the things about Apple, it's really cool. When you buy something from Apple, you know everything is in the Apple community. So in their universe, it all fits together. So the phone, the watch, everything talks to each other, iTunes, right? Well, guess what? Oracle NetSuite, same exact thing. They have software for your business that takes care of everything and it's all built to talk to each other and communicate brilliantly. So your accounting software is not you know, having conflict with your receivables management, with your collections, with your, you know, your, your, with everything else that you have. I mean, I'm not an expert. Just, I delegate that stuff out because it drives me crazy, all right, operations. But the point is, is this is literally a turnkey solution. And because it's made by the top two companies, you know, three companies in the world in this area, right? It works like a charm. There's nothing better. And everything is perfectly integrated for you into one cohesive package. And that's the story. All right. So I really want you to tip this today. I mean, you got to check this out. And here's the deal. You know, this is Larry Ellison's. This is a founder. Larry's a business genius. All right. Cool guy. All right. This guy lives, lives a great life and knows how to make money. And here's what you get. Okay. So when you actually sign up this, you get a free guide here, seven key strategies, okay, to grow your profits at netsqueet.com slash wolf. So go to netsuite.com slash wolf and you need to get this free guide of how to make more money from Oracle. It's Larry Ellison. The guy knows how to make I think he's like the third or fourth richest guy in the world. All right. That's the company you're doing business with. This is a, literally a state-of-the-art turnkey solution for managing all aspects of your business in terms of the number side, all right? So to me, that's bang. Without that, you're just kind of scratching your head. And I promise you one thing, because I made this mistake myself. I've been in business early on, early days, before I learned better, I knew better, right? I would not track my numbers. I would not keep a close eye on them. I use my intuition. I assume certain things. And you know what? When you assume you make an ass of you and me, and that's what happens. Bottom line. So I would definitely put this one at the top of my agenda. You can have money set aside, you know, to, to invest in your business. Means to upgrade. This is a must. All right. So again, it's Oracle NetSuite. Let me tell you exactly what you get here. Okay. You get to download your free guide. Okay. NetSuite.com slash wolf. Um, just, just give this one a shot. All right. See what happens. You know what's going to happen? You're going to make more money. Not just because of the guide, because you'll be able to manage your business more effectively. All right. NetSuite, Oracle, boom. Big time. Let me just read the website to you one more time. Let me just see how it. It's netsuite, N E T S U I T E dot com slash wolf. All right. Check this one out. Right. So, for the actual, for the salesperson themselves, though, how do you manage that situation? Do you keep trying to push or you go on to the next door? Well, you definitely want to go and you, you definitely need a funnel. You definitely need, I mean, the, the ultimate solution to all sales is to have a lot of people to talk to. Okay. It's not some trick. Right, so if you're if you're if you're cold calling out in the field, yeah. right? Let's say you're going door to door. A lot of people do that, right? So whether it's door to door or out on the phone, right? You knock on someone's door, right? Do you believe that you should try to knock on as many doors as possible, try to really go deeper into people who aren't interested, or what's the sweet spot? No, they should. The, 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 I, you know I what think, I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's not a trick question. Just, just, you know, what's the sweet spot? How do you know when there, it's better to is, not waste there is your no time? Sweet spot. Okay. Right, like because even if they hit the sweet spot, it's about volume. I mean, there's no there's no success without volume. Okay. So anybody that's trying to like come up with the the thing is trying to get away from the work. Right. And and so there there's no trick in this game. Like if a person wants to be really successful in sales, real estate, acting, you need a lot of hits. Right. Right. So so like I think everybody's looking for that one thing that gets that in the door and gets that one sale. As opposed to yeah, I'm no no no, about, but yeah, yeah, as okay. opposed to as opposed to dude, how do I keep calling on the whole neighborhood? Right. How do I keep working that neighborhood and then the next neighborhood and then how do I come back? Because one thing the cold call people do that it, it, incorrectly is they canvas cold a neighborhood and they never go back to that neighborhood. But watch, I do. I go back in. So so I'm basically following you up. 
Okay. Okay. It's uh, somebody once said, hey, somebody else uh, uh, blows up the tire. Uh, they blow up the tires and I, I ride the bike. You know, they get them ready. Okay. So, so that neighbor, that person, that phone call, that door is going to be knocked on again by someone. Okay. Now, the fact the most people are just not going to go back and you no know, go back and hit on it. But the 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 the, the what about time management issue. What's the time management in terms of the, new doors versus the goal, old the goal, doors? I don't know. I don't know. The gold you is in the follow up. Okay. So in other words, you don't have a distinction. Because it's a good question, don't you think? That like, when do you not know? Really, I think it's a bad question. You think it's a bad question? I think it's not the right question. I think it's. I to think know I, when I, to not to. Follow. I think the young salesperson should be taught. Hey, look, there's no trick, dude. There's no freaking sweet spot of this game. The sweet spot, if there is a sweet spot, it is about creating tremendous volumes of activity, having lots of people to talk to. So, go hitting lots and lots of doors. Or taking lots of phone calls. Or, or, or hitting doors, or whether it's cold, cold the, phone, the, or the, doors, the right? Sweet spot, Numbers game, you think? Without a doubt. Okay. But, but if they know me, rather than me knowing them, if they already know me, right. then, I, then my leverage goes up probably 10x. Okay. Can you explain that? Hey, oh, I know you. I saw you in the paper. I saw you. On, like, 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 you know, you, you get that because people, you know, know about the movie, right? So, right. so you immediately have some altitude or lift. Right. Because people know you. It's not who I know. It's who knows me. Right. So for the young salesperson just getting started. Or old. There's some old salespeople <laughs> out there. You got any old people watching your show? I got a few, you know. Okay. I, I tell you what, though. I, I actually skew kind of on the young side, but uh -huh. I have eight, all ages, of course, right? So I guess what I'm trying to say is, that, is like for someone starting out, right? Like, because there's so many yeah. people get into sales. They and, and the thing I see them doing a lot of people is they try to they waste their time talking to non. They try to go I so I, deep I, I, I into a non buyer. You yeah, disagree? I, I, I think people need to learn how to talk to people. Right. You keep talking to them, no matter what their interest is. So if you give someone a call, let's say you give someone a stack of like 200 leads to dial through, yeah. right? And you get a salesman who wants to. Speak to everybody. Like, he's going to speak to someone who's, say, have no money, they have no job, and they want to sell them a $10,000 product, and they waste 45 minutes in that call. Would that be smart or not smart? He, he, he shouldn't have started that call with one product. Why? Because why, 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 you know, he works what, at a company that has one product. That's stupid. Go, go some other place. Because so work you can't change sell job one then. product. Okay. I mean, who does that? Amazon doesn't do it. Uh, grocery stores don't do it. Uh, Starbucks doesn't do it. No, nobody, no matter how good that one product is, nobody can build a business or any kind of success on one product. Or let's say a couple of products, two or three products, right? The you average need, company out there. Yeah. You, you need more than one product. You need more than one product, okay. Like, like if I try to hit everybody with a $10,000 product or even a $1 even product. One, even a $100 product. If I hit product. somebody with a $1 product, I miss the guy that wants to spend $10,000. So the or idea, see value okay. So the idea is go work for a company that has a whole suite of products. Gives you much. You can sell something to everybody, right? Basically, right? Yeah. Okay. I like that. Cool. Like Thanks. we probably have, I don't know, we probably have a hundred different products on our website. What's the least? Well, yeah. What's the? What's like you say of all the? What's the for your in your business, right? Cardone yeah. University, right? And what's, that's what. That's what. That's one division. There, there's 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 sixteen companies. Cardone University will have fifty million users on that platform. Okay. So. Uh, there, there, there's two versions of that. There's an individual and there's a corporate. The corporate's about 40 to 80 grand a year. We sell, we probably have 1,400 companies on that product. Sales training or other training too? Uh, mostly tr uh, sales training. Mostly sales training, time management, uh, personal efficiency type stuff, uh, closing, negotiating, personal finance, and money mastery. Uh, th these are these are all things that I have done successfully in my life that I'm like, hey, this worked for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you, but right. I know it's going to work. I know it worked for work me. Worked for you. And and now now that we've had 30 years of it, we're like, hey, it's worked for some other people too. So if it doesn't work for you, so it's interesting. So, so, you, so that's the corporate. Sure. That's the corporate thing. And then the other thing. That's why I'm bad as an interviewer. I never listen. So so <laughs> fucking got to listen. So 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 I have. You don't like it doing it, right? No, it's fine. No, I hate doing the. Interview. I, hate I know. It. It's so, tough, right? So there's the corporate thing, and then there's the individual. Uh, that can get into that program for, you know, a uh, hundred bucks. Okay. Some very similar product, if not sometimes the same. Right. I'm selling in one place for a hundred bucks. Sure. And another place for 80 grand. Same exact product or little, very, very, very similar. similar. Right. Same learning. So how do you basic. pull that off? That That's the trick. That's the thing that people should be asking. Right. How do I create multiple products, multiple price points without killing myself with inventory? Because, we're not Amazon, right? And I'm not Whole Foods. I, I, I can't. I'm not Starbucks. I, can't, I don't have the, the money to finance the, the, the individual listening today. Okay. So I have an apartment complex. I would never go and say, I only have two bedrooms. 
I got studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms. Otherwise, I don't have a shot. Whether they're coming to me or whether I'm going to them or whether it's on the phone or outbound, to me, it's all the key the same. is having a, huge, a wide variety, variety of products to sell, right? Well, well, it, it could that, it could be three on a landing page. Okay, like like you know, people people are on Instagram talking about ba ba ba. I got ba ba ba, and then they, they they go to a website. They shouldn't be going to a website. They should be going to a landing page, and there should be one choice there with two possible options at most. Would you say you're a better salesman or marketer? I'd say I'm a better businessman. Better business. Which of the two sales to marketing? What do you think about those two? I'm a better businessman. Better businessman. Entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm not thinking about, no, no. I'm thinking about being a businessman. There's, two, there's a lot of define, entrepreneurs out explain, there. Explain that Okay, me. so an entrepreneur, by definition, is not what most people are doing right now. Like, like they're just calling themselves entrepreneurs. They, they hadn't even looked up the damn the de definition. There used to be a time when the watch you wore on your wrist would help you get to someplace at the right time because we didn't have phones that we carry around that were like perfectly accurate, right? That's the old world. New world, well, you don't really need a watch, so to speak, because you have your phone, right? But we all still wear watches. Why? Well, the status symbols, they look good, they feel good. Also, it's pretty convenient to kind of, you know, twist your little wrist around and versus taking your phone out of your pocket, right? Here's the thing. Go back even further, 100 years ago. You know, you had these big Swiss companies that charge a massive amount of money for a watch. Why? Because they told better time. Like the average crappy watch, you know, which wouldn't even keep time that well. So you could be five minutes late, didn't work, right? Well, guess what? Everything changed in like the in like the fifties or sixties, and they invented these sort of you know, quartz movement that was like just perfect, like literally as accurate as the most accurate watch in the world, and it wouldn't cost anything. So the whole watch game changed, right? And then it came about who's got the best style, who's got the best branding, what makes you feel good, right? And I got to tell you this. So here's the thing: a twenty thousand dollar watch and this Vincero watch. By the way, check this out. I mean, it's beautiful. They, they tell time just as good. So they beautifully accurate. And this is, this looks good. I mean, listen, I wear this because I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. It works like a charm. Listen, that's not the thing. It's, of course it works. Watches nowadays, you could take a $5 watch or, or a, a $100,000. They tell time the same way. What looks good? What feels good? All right? This watch, I've been telling you, Vincero, this is an awesome watch. When you put this on, you feel great. Bottom line, they say like the suit makes the man. You know what? The watch also kind of makes the man. And it comes, you know, with these, I have like sort of more of a dressy one on, right? They have sport models, all right? They have like, you know, stainless steel. And th these are ultra cool watches. Now, here's the thing, right? This is a, obviously, you know me, I'm, I'm a wealthy person, right? Thank God for that, all right? And I wear really expensive watches, right? I, I would not put a piece of crap on my, on my wrist, all right? I love this watch. I really do. It's, it's a great watch. It's a great looking watch. You would think, if you saw me walking around with this watch, I guarantee you'd say, oh, was it a Patek Philippe or something? You'd think the watch is twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. You just would, because I'm wearing it, right? Guess what? You can get this watch, especially because you're watching this, you get a discount because you're watching the show. This watch, a few hundred dollars. At most, they have all different types of watches. This is the more expensive one. It's a few hundred bucks. This watch should be honestly ten thousand dollars. It looks, feels, operates, has everything of a ten thousand. Even though like these little extra dials, I love them. I mean, I really, I have to say, in all seriousness, I love this watch. I really do. I know that you will too. All right. So here's how you get this watch. Ready? Vincero. V i n c e r. Vincero. V E V I N C E S early. Cero.com. Vincero.com. All right. And then you use the code Wolf. You get another 15% off. All right. If nothing more, just go to the website. Just check out the watches. Just what's the worst that could happen? You see, you don't like the way they look? Don't buy one. But you know what? When you see the styles they have, they have a style for everything. I promise you this. One thing I can promise you, when you put this watch on your arm, on your wrist, you're going to feel great. And that's what a men's watch is all about. They all tell great time, right? It's about how do they look? How do they feel? What does it say about you? And when I put this watch on, I feel good when I walk around. Just imagine how good you feel, how good you're going to look. 
after you put the switch on, you're walking down, people will comment on it. I'm seriously, it, it, I'm serious about this. People will make comments, they beautiful watch. It's, it's got that sort of just, it's a, it's a hardy and also it's weight to it. It's not one of those tinny, like, why well, is a real watch, all right? I don't know how they, they honestly, they, I don't know how they make money on these watches. They're beautiful. They should be 10 times as much money, but hey, you know, take advantage, all right? Vincero.com, check it out. Enter Wolf and you can't go wrong. So, I'm just going to look it up just so I don't. Of entrepreneur? Yeah. Okay. You know what? You ever looked it up? Mm, I, I, I kind of know intuitively what, what, what it means. What do you think it means? Someone who starts businesses and, you know. Person who organizes <laughs> and operates a business or businesses. <laughs> taking on, listen, but this is the important part. This is good for your young viewer. Taking on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. By definition, the second half of that, most people are not entrepreneurs because they never take on any risk. Mm. Like they're, they're holding on to their money. They got cash in the banks. They got equity in their houses. They're saving money, saving for retirement. If you're doing any of that shit. Versus putting the balls you, against you, the you, fucking you, wall, you're right? You're a bitch. You're like, what are you doing, dude? You're, you're more committed. People are more committed to the equity in their home than they are to the equity of their brand or business. So I made this mistake for years. In your own life? Yeah. Yeah. When did you, you said like, so you weren't successful early on. When was the shift? What was it like the, that moment where all of a sudden. When I was 51. 51. Yeah, yeah. How old ten, are you ten, now? You're fucking older ago. than me. 61. You're older than yeah, me. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what was the shift. What was it? 2010, man. Tell me. T 2010, I was just like, I had I had a little bit of success. You know, I had three companies that were doing well. Right. And uh, what were those companies? Was it sales there, there training? Was, there no? was a sales training, a speaking business. Okay. That I had been doing for 20 years. And uh, it had really become just about me collecting a fee. We, we would market it. We, we owned the, the, the production of the, the event. The only difference was I wasn't getting a speaking fee. I was getting a piece of the gate. Okay. So I, I didn't actually do any speaking for hire. Speaking about sales? Uh, sales. Or, or, it was all sales. Uh, and it was- it, Industry specific? Or, yeah, it was automotive. Okay. I, I was very, very dependent upon the automobile industry. So, so I realized, number one, I'll never be dependent upon one industry again, ever. Uh, number two, uh, the other business was a consulting business that so was similar and in, in auto. In, in, yeah, that, that that I didn't run. I was a partnership, and and I collected a royalty with it, and that was great for years. It was great until it wasn't right. Right. And then the third business was I would take all the money from the first two, and pour it into real estate because I knew that real estate would live longer than I could. Right. And it would work better than I could. So the problem with all three of those though is I never did it big, like I never did it big big. So I had guys that had worse ideas and worse products that were beating me in the marketplace. I'm like, that, his stuff sucks, dude. And, but he beat me. Right. Because he's advertising like a madman and pouring money at it. Exactly. He, he was like, like, and I was making fun of him. But the truth is, he was manning up in the game. Who and was I he? wasn't. Uh, it was a guy named, uh, well, there's a number of them. I mean, there's a bunch of companies. There was a bunch of guys around me in advertising, marketing, another sales training company. They were pouring money on the deal, and I wasn't. I was saving money. Right. In 2010, and I said, oh, shit, but I got more money than they do. I knew I, I, knew I was w w wealthier by net worth than they were. But so what, right? Because when 2010 came, it took us all out. Like, everybody got washed out. Yeah. So my first business got cut in half. The second business got cut by 80%. And, and the real estate, I couldn't move any real estate. I couldn't sell it, couldn't, couldn't. I mean, I, I was still renting. It, was, it, it actually got me through 2010 because the rent kept coming in because the other two stopped completely. How the real estate stuff doing? It was really 2009, really, right? That's when it started. Well, 2008 nine, was started. Nine, it, the day was, it, no, it, was two, nine, nine, it was cataclysmic fear. <laughs> 2010, I remember my like, like, People getting fucking, I remember. now they're starting to clean up the mess. The, the bank that I, I owed a bank, $52 million, they went under. And I'm like, okay, glad that wasn't me. But the problem is when the bank goes under, right? when the, the, when the boat that you're on goes down right. and the new bank comes in, the yeah. new bank says, we got some new rules. Fuck you, pay me. <laughs> it was called a technical default. And anybody, whoever, when the, if the, uh, the loan changed names, ownership, right. they could call the loan. Yeah, they were doing crazy shit back then. Yeah. Cutting yeah. credit lines, unbelievable, I know. Yeah, yeah. So that was, so, so when did that hit so, the bottom so of 2010? What, what, was the worst no, part? No, I mean, it, it, there was no bottom right there. It was like, oh, I got it. How, how long <laughs> am I going to get dragged out, right? We, we didn't lose anything. I didn't go bankrupt. I didn't lose anything. All my buddies that were buying real estate and, and, and really doing a lot of no money down stuff, they lost everything. But right. I was terrified, okay? I was, I was so scared. I thought I'd left my family down and um, we couldn't expand. I was too scared to expand, even though I had some cash. I had a great opportunity to invest in a great company. I would have. I love the guy. And I, 
he wanted a million dollars, a measly million dollars. I had it, but I couldn't give it to him, dude, because I was so scared. And so I realized then I will never be in this position again. That was 10 years ago. And what I did then was started, okay, I got to get other industries to know me. I got to get known. I got to start using these social mediums that I thought was a waste of time. You know, I'm like, this is all bullshit. <laughs> and so I just leaned into it, dude, and we built a Facebook following. And yeah, and so and that changed everything. We didn't have any e-commerce going. We'll do $40 million in e-commerce this year. It's awesome. Yeah. So what was the first thing, like, taking it to, like, now, what's the first thing you did when you, you said, fuck it, I'm just, I'm going balls to the walls. You started, it, it went, it went, did you hire consultants? Or you, did you, no, what, I, I, I didn't Just figured out yourself trial and no, error, basically? Yeah, yeah, I didn't hire any consultants. Just said, I'm going to do what makes sense to me, basically, right? Uh, I just started, like, okay, I, okay, I'm not sleeping. I'm not, I, you know, no more play. I told my wife, I said, don't spend any money. Everything went into, everything went into, suff we went into a suffer mode. Like, okay, we're going to suffer now. We're right. going to suffer until we're out of this deal, and I will never do this to my family again. Right. And so in 10 years, we went from, you know, I don't know, 60 customers to almost 2,000 corporate to, you know, probably 20,000 individuals on a regular basis recurring right. uh, to we went from, I think I had 300 units then. We have 6,000 now. That's 20X, not 10X, so. <laughs> do you, what, is your core business now real estate? Is it mostly you're doing... What do you think, think it is really? Sometimes is, I wonder. Because I've heard, you know, a couple said you're really into, heavily into real estate. Yeah. And, we got a and, billion. And you have, you actually sell, um, do you have, a, you take in outside money too, right? Cardone Capital. Cardone so what does it explain that to me? Cardone Capital. We created Cardone Capital because I set up a thing for my twin brother, my sister. Identical or fraternal? Uh, identical. No. Yeah, identical. Let me see. I might Come be on. Him. I might be him I right now. Fucker. How it? do you know I'm not him? I don't, how, how do I know it's you not don't you? Fucking know. I don't even know. <laughs> Shit. Maybe I'm him. I don't even know it. And you guys look exactly, well, when you were he, younger, you probably looked exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He went the corporate route. He's very corporate. I'm very not corporate. So Cardone Capital, we created because so many people said, hey, I want to invest in real estate the way you do. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. Can't find the deals. A bunch of my wealthy friends that, you know, they're running businesses. They're like, I don't have time to go find right. real estate, you know? People that live in California, they're like, I, there's no way you can buy this shit around here. Because you never own this stuff. Like, the tenant owns this. Right. You buy this place right here and try to rent it out, he doesn't have to pay you and you can't get him out right. in this state. Here in New York, you can't get people out. So you don't really own the property. Mm. So anyway, we created Cardone Capital. We've raised, we've raised $223 million. Do you raise from accredited 20, investors or in, unaccredited or both? Anyone? In 20 months. In 20 months. Without paying a fee, what type? Of, you know, you know what that takes. That's great. So what? Two hundred twenty million. Who's your typical investor? Non-accredited and accredited. Okay. Five thousand minimum for non-accredited and a uh, hundred thousand minimum for for accredited. Great. And do they? How does explain how it works? They get they get a six percent return on their money. That's the preferred return for the accredited. There's no preferred on the non-accredited, and then they get a it's a sixty five thirty five split on the way out. Okay. Ten year, ten year hold with discretion could be longer than ten years. In fact, it might be we never sell. The goal, the goal really is to refinance the portfolio. So is that cash every, flow that they get for every month? They get paid every month, no matter what. Or the sell, how about so, as long preferred? as the property cash flows. I can't. I can't. I want cash flow. Like, like the, the, this, this, this cash flow is king. <laughs> right? Cash, cash is trash. Cash by itself is shit. So the, the, the idea it's is one of the truest statements ever uttered. <laughs> it, it's, it's garbage. It's garbage. Cash right? flow so, is king. Cash flow is king. So so I learned that we, the hard way when I was twenty one years old. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we just buy properties that cash flow from day one. We don't build anything. We don't do condos. We don't do strip malls. We do we only I only buy what flows cash back to the to the investors and myself Got it. the next month. Got it. And how long have you been doing the um the outside money for? Uh, 20, 20, months? 20 months. 20 months. Yeah, 20 that's great. You raised lots, a lot of money. Yeah, we've raised a lot. We're gonna, I'm going to raise a billion dollars in cash in the next. Go, can you go back the next, to the, what, in the next your, 18 months? What, what, one what, billion. What? Hey, one billion dollars in cash. One billion dollars. One billion. I'm going to end up building. What makes that. Grand Cardone? Well, go back. Cardone to Capital is going to be a ten billion like dollar this. company. I'm going to sell can this. I have this hat? Do I get to keep this sure. hat. This I'm going to sell this. Cash I'm going to sell this to. Uh, Blackstone or Goldman Sachs. Awesome. Yeah. So tell me, what's your, what was your like your upbringing? Like, were you rich, poor, no, middle no, class? No, tell I me. No, uh, we were middle class. I know you were a twin. Yeah, yeah, we were middle class. Yeah. And, and uh, ethnic. My I dad mean, died when I was ten. Right. So that 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 left a big void. You know, Are you the youngest, middle, or in your family. Uh, oh, uh, I was the youngest. You're the youngest. Yeah. Uh, I was number is... four, number four and five. Okay. 
So and the last two, he and they weren't planning us. So my dad was 50, 42 years old. And, and he died? No, no. He was 42 when he, he had, had us, okay. when, when he knew we were coming. He had three other kids. Okay. So he was like, oh, my God, I wasn't planning on this deal. And then he's got a double double trouble. Right. He's a middle class dude. He was he was doing the Wall Street thing back in the uh, uh, you stock know stock broker. Yeah, stock broker selling stocks and looking at real estate on the weekend, which okay. I found to be quite quite interesting. I'm like, why? I'm thinking, I said, why aren't you looking at stocks on the weekend? Why are you looking at real estate? Because even the stock brokers know the stocks are bullshit. Right. How about your mom? She was a homemaker, little okay. Italian lady, four four eleven. They're both dead now. Okay. And then where'd you? Was in Michigan? You Lake Charles. Lake Charles. Close. Small town. Close. Water's, the only thing Lake Charles and Michigan have in common is the water's bad. So what? So you okay? So you, so you had a couple of unsuccessful sales. Yes. Forays. Six, six, six. And then you went out there. You sold. What was the, the so it was fish was the first thing you sold well. I yeah, guess. but 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 you know yeah I had a drug what problem. Really, when did you really sell? It was a car? What was it like? The, I sold really, automobiles when, when I was you, When you really like snap in? It's obviously a way that you sell, right? Is there a strategy? Or no, it's just hard. It's like it's mostly hard work. You think or there's a strategy? You have a lot of stuff you teach. It's strategy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But so there, what's is, the there's there's no strategy that works without somebody to talk to. Right. So what's but what's so the ultimate? That, what's the digging no, past the that? ultimate ultimate? Like like I've been teaching strategy for twenty years, but again, like if people would just spend time on the funnel, on the traffic, on the opportunity, on, on the marketing, known, on, on the marketing known, side of the equation, it is the it is the it is the the holy grail. Like look around, man. Look, you know, you don't go to Amazon and, and have anybody sell anything to you. It's the funnel. It's it's the traffic. So I made that. I made that mistake of thinking I'm going to be great at what I say to them. I'm going to close the deal. Right. You know, um, I got to keep my funnel closed, uh, 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 full. I got to keep that funnel full so I have something to close. Okay. So, so how about, how about so, let's assume that you have yeah. that side figured out. You're a master of the funnel, right? Yeah, then you don't need then, to, then, then, then you, you won't even ask to, this you, question. Then you need to sell. You won't need, you won't. But you it, have a sales force, right? Yeah. Yeah, so and they, they, there they, are things they need to say, but at the end of the day, if he's talking to 10 people a day and another guy's talking to 200 people a day, the guy that talks to 200 is going to win the game. And if there's one skill you want to learn is how to, how to move through 200 without it causing you. It's like the ball players. You see these guys playing ball. They, they don't get upset because they lose the game. Like they, it doesn't bother them. They're in it for the long run. They're, they're, you know, and, and this is what the sales guy or sales manager doesn't know. You got to get people ready for the long game. Okay. So, like, what is a sales guy, a young guy who's struggling? What would be the first thing you'd say to a guy, struggling salesperson? Help somebody else, maybe. Maybe if you're struggling so bad, don't don't work on your own deals right now. Go help somebody. Like, me, anytime, anytime I had a struggling slump. Struggling automobile sales. I had a slump. Okay. I had a slump. First thing I'd do with a slump. The, the thing that has never let me down is helping somebody else. In what sense? Meaning? Help another salesperson. Hey, Jordan, I'll help you on your deals. Got what it. do you want for that? Nothing. Okay. Just give me the list of people you talked to yesterday. Because I'm fucking up my own deals. Okay. Just give me your list. I'll call them. What do you want for it? Nothing, dude. All I'm trying to do is get out of my slump, bro. And I'll try shit with your customers that I won't try on mine. Because I'm desperate with mine. So I just go into charity mode. Got it. And that helped me when I was 25. I went to a treatment center for drug addiction. And that was the first time I was able to start that. We have that in common. Yeah. You know. yeah. What was your drug of choice, by the way? Any drug. <laughs> Not yeah. as many as me. Yeah. Well, maybe it was. I don't know. Any, any drug. Yeah, me too. So, yeah. you know, Terrible, yeah. terrible. The, yeah. the thing about drugs, you know, you guys out there that are experimenting, like, <laughs> yeah, they're just awful, dude. Because yeah. the mean, way you feel. Just, it almost destroyed my life. I mean, you know, I mean. The way you feel about yourself is terrible while yeah. you're doing it, you know. So it's, it, you know, it's interesting because when the thing with drugs is when you're doing it, you think you like you think you can't exist without it. It's bizarre almost. Like I look mm -hmm. back, I'm sober for many, many years, right? I'm sober for over 20 years, right? Yeah. And then, but when I was doing it, I convinced myself that everyone else was on drugs. Like how could you live without it? It's like yeah, it's, yeah. this bizarre. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew everybody else wasn't on it. <laughs> I, I thought I literally, yeah, yeah, I deluded yeah, myself yeah, yeah. into like, ah, oh, they all gotta be. How could you be this wealthy and this? Yeah. You have to be on drugs yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. make move through the world, right? Yeah, so, yeah. That was my belief. You know? Yeah. So how long you sober for? Uh, I hadn't used drugs since I was twenty five. Okay. So, uh, what is that? 30, 36 years. Okay. A little while. So, so first thing, good point, charity, right? So you go say, if you're yeah. struggling, say, let me help you with your deals. I don't want any commission. I just want to start talking, get myself talking, Back in the saying deal. the right I, thing. I, I just need to, I need to make a shot. Okay. And then what? And I need to loosen up, you know, because when you're losing deals, you get tight, right? So th then, then once I break out of it, I'm back on again. Got it. 
Okay. How about um, when in terms terms of like the phone ver- use the phone versus yeah, door I, yeah. knocking? Which phone, do you like phone, better? Phone's definitely senior. Phone's the better one. Phone's senior because I can talk to more people. Like I, I used to market my own seminars. Right. We would I would I would market the seminar for three days, and then I would show up in the city. Another group was just marketing the city. I would do a city in 14 days. We were doing seminars in 14 days. They were spending uh, anywhere from eight weeks to 10 weeks to market the same seminar, right. which raised their cost. I'm in and out in 14 days because I made three days of phone calls that were brutal. Hey, I'm coming to San Antonio, man. Will you, will you give me five minutes? And this is before anybody knew who I was, right? No books, no, no kind of right. notoriety. So they're like, no, no, don't come by. But see, that was interest. To me, that's interest. No, no, I'm not interested. Not interested. So is, not interested to use interest. Well, it is. It says not interested. Not is a, a, an adjective to describe interest. Okay. Right. So it's a level of interest. So if someone says they're not I interested, have, on then, a scale from zero to ten, what interest level do you have? None. That is a level. Right. Okay. And then one, two, three, four, five. You with me? A few minutes ago, he didn't know. He he didn't know he had no interest. At least I'm on. You see what I'm saying? You get it? Well, I wouldn't do that. I, I disagree with that. But yeah, I, I'm not saying okay, that. Not, okay. Reasonable minds could differ. I would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more about hitting massive numbers. I would yeah, move yeah, on to the yeah, next guy. Yeah, well, the I, problem I see is with salespeople, get, a lot of people, they have a fear of cold calling. Yeah. So they'll use as an excuse to not cold call, to talk to someone for too long. They know he's not going to buy. They get into casual conversations. They go yeah. up to fucking Pluto. Yeah, and well, that, they, don't, that, they don't pick up next call. That, so that's what bothers yeah, me yeah. about doing that. Yeah. Well, then they're not trained. Because they shouldn't be having casual well, so, conversations. We shouldn't yeah. be talking about the weather and sports and right, politics. But, but, you know, in the absence of 24-7 supervision, that's what salespeople do. They do. Well, there should be 24 hours. There should be 24-7 right. uh, supervision. They should be, the phone calls should be recorded. The right. manager should know exactly what they opened with. But in the real world, though, that's not possible. In thing. my real world, it's possible. I know, but In your pro- real world, maybe it's not. But in, in your in real world, world, everybody's you know, using drugs. <laughs> so in my real world, fucking nobody's using drugs. And you're, you're going to set the intention. Hey, I'm calling because I want to get you on this program. That's the reason I'm calling you. Okay, so in your I'm with Grant Cardone, your, let me, Grant, let me, let me Grant, tell you, I'm in this yeah, Hang on a second. No Grant, one is, no one's having ineffective conversations in your in your room ever. No, no, or no. any company you train. No, no, what I'm, no, I didn't say that. Okay. I said in my real world, it, where where we work, where in Miami, when then those guys are on the phone, every one of those calls are recorded. Right. And everyone's listened to by QC people, every exactly. single one. Uh, ma- management, and, and, and they're intervened if they're, they're incorrect. They're tr- they train every morning. They train every night. Okay. Okay, they're recorded in their trainings, and they're corrected. And if they, if, once they correct, the, their numbers, their statistics will go up. Mm-hmm. Look, if the program works, the stats should go up, mm-hmm. period. Like, just because you're getting training education, and if, if it's not moving the, the graph, like, w- w- what kind of training is that? Okay. So we, we measure everything by a graph. The graph's either going up or it's going down. And if it's going down over and over, then you get to go away. Okay. So, if and, you, so, you, so you think that at any given moment in the average sales force out there, salespeople I, I, are just I, always I, doing the right, I, even if I, they I train. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't talk about the average sales force because I'm thinking about mine. So mine needs to become the model. Right. I got guys making selling on the phone, like the calls you're talking about, that, that will make more money than a guy at Goldman Sachs. Okay. Selling, selling a $20,000 product. Right. But listen, you know, in all due respect, buddy, I've trained millions of salespeople. Millions. And, and I have. And I, I, and I just know, and I've trained yeah. all types. And I know that. How'd you train them, though? What? How'd you train them? Doesn't matter. The point is, yeah, it matters. It matters. No, it doesn't matter. In all, in all, no, I trained them in my own business and in from stage as a consultant. The point is, is that my in my opinion is human beings are human beings and people, the average salesperson, that if you leave them to their own devices, they will tend to totally stay agree. too long on a call because they don't want to pick up the phone and dial the next they one. They won't make a call, exactly. No, well, if you get them to make calls, yeah. but they'll still stay too long, yeah. so you want to rein them in. Yeah, but the, then you would look at, then somebody's not managing that guy because you would look at number of calls, not just calls. Like talk time, talk time that right. equates to nothing. Yeah, means somebody doesn't know what they're doing, right? right? So it's not, you, you don't leave human beings up to their own devices. Well, the thing is, though, so you don't really, leave them. Like if you when you have a commission you, structure, right? You want to obviously create an incentive plan that cert- that motivates people. You don't want to disincentivize people, right? So you want to motivate people with certain things. You want to set them up to succeed, right? 
I want to make sure they're successful. Right, you want to set them yeah. on and give them the best chance of success, right? Yeah. So my point is, is that when I have someone on a phone, well, I train them, is that if I, I, my belief is that people have a tendency, I think you, you agree with this, that in the absence of intervention, they'll talk too long to someone who's not going to buy it. That's my belief. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? Uh, I agree that they would, yes. Okay, good. So then my point is that, so I try to instill you know, procedures to stop them to know when, what, when do you know, like, cause some people, they're just not natural salespeople. I am. No, nobody's a natural okay, salesperson. Okay, well, I was. I was a natural salesperson. Okay. I was. And I, I, I ran to many, many over the years. They were naturals, yeah. right? Many are. How many, how many have you run into? Countless, countless Can't people. Can't count them. Countless, countless natural sales. Yeah, and yeah, also, yeah, yeah. there's the whole barometer yeah. in between, right? The point is, is that what I always say, even with natural, even myself, that if without conscious forethought, You'll tend to extend the call longer than you should yeah. because you don't want to pick up that phone. And it's like human nature on some levels, psychology. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think people want to avoid, you know, th that's, why, that's why I went, said earlier, it is the number, it's the volume. What do you, it's you, getting you, through. You made fun of NLP, right? Neurolinguistic Pro. I heard someone say, I just got to no, know. I, I, don't think, I don't think much of any gimmicks like NLP, gimmick. Yeah, totally. I've never had an NLP, NLP uh, salesman work for us like well, i don't know there are NLP they've never been i don't know what an nlp salesman would look like it's not, I, don't, I don't either I, yeah. I know guys that are like hey i'm doing LMP. Uh, good mm. they never work they, they never they never they're you, never have you studied it at all no they never they're never productive so we got i don't know i think we got 80 salespeople on the phone today so i got guys keeping stats on people we're, we're like hey guys look there's no fucking tricks here the trick is the call the trick is a good contact the trick is that they're they're qualified to buy from us then you got to make so the a qualified to, to buy. They, they can make, afford the product. They need the product. They want it. That, yeah, to find qualified. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're talking to a decision maker who is has the money, has or, the money and the interest and the interest. Okay, and the need. Okay, okay. And so they then, come pre-qualified to no, the sales force. No, not necessarily. So, but I'm just saying, if you're not talking to qualified people, it doesn't matter. Right? So who? So I could be talking to Grant Cardone, the decision maker, who right. is qualified, who has money. But fuck, I ain't making that decision. That's who, not my decision. In in, in your. Forget your scope. In an average company, right? So you get salespeople, they speak to I, I unqualified. I would quit talking about average companies if well, I were you. I, I don't know why when you, you train going back to average who, who, you, who wants to be average? You, dude, why are you guys studying average dude, people? Dude, dude, I'm talking about, because if you're training, if you're a sales, I'm talking to you as a sales trainer, not as your own company. You're going into companies as an I, I, average I, I, I out Jordan, there, that's buddy. the problem, though. The, the, how, many, how many people do you have today on the phone? At this moment? Yeah. Um, 10 or 12 people today. Yeah. So, so, like, what I'm saying to you is, it, what trainers should be doing okay, yeah. is they should have their own environment under control. What's okay. working in their own environment? How many people are actually making money in their environment? You know, you know this as well as anyone. There's a lot of fucking guys out there saying they're this and they're that and they ain't nothing at home. There's no business. There's no P&L. There's no expenses. What do you mean? I'm going, no, wait, wait, I'm they're, they're, they're training from the, they're, they're speaking. I, I referenced this earlier. I mean, about, sales trainers, you mean? Uh, speakers. Speakers. Business a, experts. Yeah, yeah, okay, uh, right. Okay. Speaking experts. Right. Uh, gurus. Okay. That are like talking about how to do X. And they've never really done it And themselves. ain't nobody at home, bro. They right. ain't no X at home. Right. Okay. And, and so this is really frustrating for me because I was that guy. And, and I referenced this earlier. I did this from uh, 32 to probably probably 10 years of my career where I was like, what speaking am I doing? about stuff you really didn't know about. No, no, I knew about it. I knew I was an expert on that topic, but I was not running a business. I was so, so I kept making these analogies and comparisons to situations that were useful. They were educational, certainly entertaining, but it was not practical in the real world of making something fit in. But dude, all because you're not I, dude, running a business. Dude, I've trained millions of salespeople, and in the real world of practical sales training, mm -hmm. there are certain things you see again and again at the average company. They're all over the world. Salespeople have typical habits, right? Would you agree with that or no? You don't think there's typical habits salespeople have? I, I don't think it's about salespeople. I think it's about people. Not but, about salespeople. Okay. No, what's it got to do with sales? About training. You to... train salespeople, don't you? I, I train people. You train people. Right? And that's one of our Who businesses, was? right? But but like when we're trying to buy a piece of real estate, look, we're, we're not, I'm, 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 I'm calling people that are doing, you're doing a deal for a hundred million dollars. Right, wait, wait. There, you, there is no. You're there, telling you like more real, let's talk real estate, right? No, let, no, 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 no. Let's not, let's not leave that. Okay. You can't, there's no tricks when I'm talking to a guy on the phone. I got that phone call I did a few minutes ago. That's a hundred million dollars worth of deals that you can't trick a guy into that. I can't cross my legs and think, 
okay, that's going to get you. You keep the deal. using the word trick, though. Like, what do you mean trick? I'm, I'm confused when you make trick. There's no gimmick, bro. There's This is what your viewer needs to see. It's, it's not like, trick. There's no but, trick. Is there there's strategy? No, the strategy is to have a full pipeline. So, the, But what about once you get a qualified buyer in the corner? Is there a strategy then or no? Certainly. but What's the, best, the strategy then? To make contact. To and find once out you, what the once you make is, contact, to determine what the need is, and then what's and the to strategy? fulfill the need, and then what's the strategy? How do you do that? How do you explain? How do you explain that? You, to don't, the guy? you don't explain it. You, you tell don't people what it. you want to do. You tell, hey, I want you to buy my product. Okay, here's my product. This is what my product does. This is what my product costs. That should come early, by the way. This is what my product costs. Okay, does it fit your needs? Okay, if everything I'm saying is true, does this interest you? If not today, when? Like, that's what I'm saying. There's no, there's no trick. We, you just need to tell people, just be honest with people, man. I got a, I got a cu cup of coffee. They're expensive. It's stupid, but we provide it for you, right? It's $4. You could do this at home. Do you want it or not? No? Okay, get next. And then I need to get a funnel of people in. I tried the other way. I tried the special words. I tried that thing, looking for that holy grail. And, and, and all I'm saying is consistently is like my business didn't start growing until I was like, oh, I, I need to fix the top. Of the funnel, the marketing side. But, I get it. I get. You know, I understand that. So, so if I'm trying to buy a piece of real estate, like that guy was, I, I just to, you know, I think you're a killer marketer. By the way, I really oh, do. Thank, thank you. Thank I know. Thank I, you, I, thank I, you. Let me take my fucking hats off to you. Yeah. What you've, I think you're an unbelievable marketer. I yeah, really do. You. The way you have built your business yeah. on Facebook and I, I really do. Tell me about the real estate yeah, side yeah, of the equation yeah. now. Well, so is the that really, really where, the, where do you see yourself in the future? Is really the growth towards real estate? Well, I, I'll, I'll never have a ten billion dollar uh, sales training company. I will have a $10 billion real estate company. I mean, it's just, so what you, you just can't get there with, with training people. Like, so do you, what people what, don't want to be educated, Jordan, you know that people don't want to pay. They, they want, they don't want to do the work for the abs. They just want the abs, <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll eat the diet pill, but they won't do the diet. Tell me about the um, 10X conferences, right? Okay, you want to do the real estate? Or you want to do 10X? Well, I think it's part of 10X, isn't it? No, 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 no. it's not. No. Oh, okay. I thought that it would kind of intertwine. Not at all. All right. So tell me, let's start with real estate. Okay. Because okay? I think that's what you really, real that's estate. Your, it's like, honestly, your passion seems to be real estate. If I, had, it, I love, I love, it just seems how, like how, that's your how, passion. How could someone not love real estate? So let's get it's real. It. I can touch it. I can feel it. Do you, sell, do you sell courses on how to make money in real estate? We do, but we, we, we don't even press on it. So more about what so when you like, like, yeah, yeah, there's a book. There's a, how to create wealth investing in real estate. It's uh, I think it's sold. I don't know. Just shy of 100,000 copies. I've never even, I don't even press on it. What do you think about the people that are online with all those real estate gimmicks? What do you think about that shit? Like, I don't think they own any real estate. Just, again, this is, goes back to like, like I got 6,000 apartments. I know something about real estate. You know, um, I know guys that have been teaching real estate courses for 20 years longer than I've been like around. I'm like, they still don't own any, like you got a house. Is there someone, so, the best strategy you think for them, if you were a guy with money, would you say give the money to you and invest it because you just do better than they will? Is that probably their best bet? Or to do it themselves? I, I, I would. Seriously. Well, well oh, totally. I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I mean, that's where you, no, it seems like that's, you think. I, that, I'll tell you a guy, a guy that works for me, Ryan Secco. Ryan Secco, uh, he, he was, uh, he, he found me on YouTube. He was a pilot for United Airlines. Okay. Quit his job, came to work for me, making cold calls. Right. I said, dude, look, you're, you're never fucking going to be any good, okay? I mean, it's impossible in your lifetime. He, he as, just, as a salesperson. He's too friendly, <laughs> right? So at that point, we, we had to remove him, right? Like he had the train, but he's a good guy. He just not, he wasn't fit for that deal. And he wanted to work with me. He's a pilot. He, 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 he flies planes, right? I bought a plane. He became my pilot. And then I didn't know this, but he loved real estate. So everywhere we'd go, he'd go look at real estate hmm. with me. Now he is no longer a pilot. He sits in the back of the new plane and we go out and look at real look estate. Look real estate. Yeah. So we buy real estate. What do you look for in real estate? What's these? I look for big. So big, big complexes, 300 units, ideally. You know, okay. So all, but no commercial. Sing, it's like residential. Where people live. Where these guys live. Multifamily. What do you pay? What do you pay a month? 960. Uh, what do you pay? 1350. Yeah. See, that's what I'm looking for. 1300 bucks. But uh, not in this state. Well, they live here. No, but you wouldn't buy in this oh, state. Oh, I would never I would never buy a piece of real estate here. Fuck, are you kidding? Because you can't get the tenants you out. You can't get the tenants out. I couldn't. These guys, they don't even know it. They could quit paying, and it would still be nine months before I could get them off, off the property, which means I don't own the property. Tenant always wins here. So I got to be places where I can actually own. What are the good states? Uh, you know, Texas. You mentioned Florida. Texas, Texas, Texas is great. Is great. Anything warm, anything warm. Warm, tax-free, south. 
everything's going to move, gravitate toward the southeast. Everything will move. Arizona is a great state for real estate. Nevada? Nevada is good. But Nevada, the problem with Nevada is because in the real estate thing is tricky. You need to know what you're doing. So some guy will be like, I'm going to go buy a deal in Nevada. Okay, good. I'm going to buy a big deal too. Go, that's great, man. Okay. And now what are you going to do? I'm going to put a bunch of money down to buy the deal. That's great. It's going to cash flow. That's great. If you need a mechanic for that property, you're competing with Steve Wynn's mechanic. And Steve can pay people more than you can. So you're competing with the casinos for, Got it. for help. Right. So if I have a, a leasing agent, I didn't know this until I went there and started doing some research. But when, when that fact was brought out to me, I'm like, I don't want to compete with the MGM for, for talent. Mm. So you stay away from, so best area of Texas, Florida, well, Arizona? I, I, look, uh, Utah could be great, but I'm not there. So I, I, and I need a scale. I need some scale to be in a great place. So like, okay. like, I, I could talk about real estate forever, dude. Like, I could, no, I could tell yeah, us your yeah. passion for sure. Because, because you see, it, it, because it's real. I'm just a real guy. Like if I can touch it and feel it, I've always wanted to be rich. You know, and so I've been willing to work hard to be rich, but but you can't really stay rich just working hard. I think you would agree with that. Just working your ass off, yeah. you, you're just gonna die. And so the real estate. I don't look at it work. I, I assume that when you work with real estate, you don't think you're working. You just love it, right? No, I think I'm working. I, I like, don't like all like, weekend. I, I sweat it out. I sweat yeah, but it the, out. Do I enjoy it? I really enjoy it. I know, but I, I sweated out a $2 million deal, $2 million this weekend. Right, but did you enjoy it? Did I you? didn't enjoy it while really? I was in it. No, no. See, I, I would rather not I sweat it. it. I would have rather they just lay down on the Thursday <laughs> night and said, really? okay, we'll do the Relax deal. with the family? No, what I'm saying, no, that the seller would have laid down. Okay, we, 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 we countered, we were on a $55 million deal and we countered them for 53. You didn't and, like the negotiation aspect of it. You were like, well, the, no, I'd rather, I'd rather, I wish they, they would have just, just said, let's roll and taken the deal and then I didn't have to sweat through the weekend. They folded finally at 4.30 yesterday afternoon when I thought they would, but I wish it would have been 72 hours earlier. And then I had to put something else in my pipeline to jack around with. Not that, you know. So I don't but, like but, all But that. my point was, do you, with work, do you consider your work work or you just love, yeah, you yeah. love it? No, I consider you, it work. It's definitely do you, do you love it, though? Uh, would you, if you didn't have to, would you, if you were worth a $10 yeah. billion day, would you still work? I would still work. work. I would still, so still work. work. You, you could give me $20 billion So then you I'd enjoy it. Tomorrow. So then you enjoy it. I don't know if I enjoy it. I just know I got, I, I got to do something shit. What else am I going to do? Go back to doing drugs? I got on drugs because I was bored. I didn't have enough to do. Okay. So, 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 uh, so you I, keep, I need, you, I need the activity. Idle mind I need activity. The idle oh, mind's a devil's workshop? Totally. If there's any line in the Bible that's true, that one's it. I need to be busy. Okay. You know. So tell me about to, more real estate, right? So what yeah, should yeah. a young, what, so young old real estate? Okay, so tell me what should yeah. someone do? Well, how much you should you, look? Is there a certain amount of money you need to have yeah, to good, invest good, in good real question. estate? Okay, so because the, the, there's a lot of you know, so look, if you don't have any money, you should be doing flips, but you only should do flips and wholesales until you have money. Define you know, a flip. Define a flip. I, I find a place. Uh, uh, he wants to sell it. I tell him I got a buyer for it. I, I, I've never done this. This is not my space, but I know guys that teach this successfully. And then I put a contract on that and then go out to the marketplace and sell that and pick up the spread between uh, uh, w what we contracted and what it's worth, what somebody else will pay for it. Okay. Or flip could be, Hey, I find a piece of property. I buy it with a little bit of money as mine. Hey, I'm going to live here. I put three or 4% down or nothing, fix it, flip it. That could be a flip. Okay. Can, can you flip in on a descending mall? Is it only working up markets or anytime? You, you can you, always flip. It only works in up markets. You you can always probably flip, but look, when when the flip's Much over, easier. it's over. Yeah, when yeah. it's all over, it's all over. Like, you gotta, yeah. This is where in two thousand eight, the two two units, the four units, the six units, and eight units. That's what went back to the banks. There's there's still five million homes underwater in America today. Single family, the single family home, is one of the biggest ripoffs ever in this country. Buying a house is one of the dumbest fucking things a human being could do with their money. Why is that? Because it's one door and you're not, you're paying for it. You buy it and you got to pay for it. So we buy real estate that we don't have to pay for. I rent where I live. Okay. And, and I buy, and all my cash goes into, into properties that pay me back. So the only time I do anything stupid with my money is from money coming from the passive income. What's something stupid to find something stupid? Oh, this watch is stupid. Okay. You know. What kind of watch is that? Paddock? Yeah. Nice. It's ridiculous. Right? So, but, but. How it was, much is the watch? Uh, that watch is, you know, there's. Uh, Come on. Let's see. 1,300 of these on the planet. So you can't buy this watch. Like, How much was it? This watch is probably today. It's probably 400. Beautiful. It's nice. Yeah. So but that it's was, stupid, right? It's ridiculous. Like, I don't do stupid shit. Yeah, I mean, listen, you I, deserve it. You work hard. You deserve to spend your money what you want, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to spend, I don't want to do stupid shit with money I worked hard for. I want to do stupid shit with money I didn't work for.
Got it. So you on the passive income. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. The cash flow is king. Sure. So, so we buy 300 unit complexes in these states that we're talking about. These are 38, 40 acre pieces of property. I just bought one in Naples. I'm sure you know where Naples is. Of course. Naples, yeah. Florida. So I drove up that property. I was with a partner of mine, Brandon. I said, I drove, drove up to it and I said, we're buying this for sure. And the, the agent's like, well, you hadn't even seen the numbers. Don't need to, dude. I know the number's going to work. Like, it's not, if it's for sale, the numbers have to work. At the level that I'm playing at, sure, I get it, right. the, if the numbers don't work, nobody's no going to buy, buy it. it. Right, yeah. So I know the numbers are going to work. And I knew as soon as I drove up, I said, oh, for sure. Because if that happens to me, it'll happen to somebody else. Are you too. like, are you going, like, when you just like, we're long term. So I'm saying, do you we, mostly, are you looking, trying to time it like where you think there'll be the most never, capital appreciation? Or never, five, never. What's your, do you look at like a three years, five we're years? looking 10 years. 10 years. 10, 10 years, 10 years, but most of our stuff sells in four. So you buy something. Do you, like, so I bought a deal in Nashville. I'll tell you about a deal I bought in Nashville. Let's hear about it. So as soon as I saw the deal, I saw it. It came, came across my desk. I said, I'm, buy, I'm buying this 823 units, four properties in Nashville as a portfolio. Guy in Chicago owned it. Professional, professional real estate guy. They own 10,000 units. Only property he had here was, was these last four. Bad loan on the deal. Bad loan meaning I had to adopt the property and the loan. Nobody would buy the deal because the loan sucked. Okay, high, high rate of interest. It was five and three quarters or something. I said, I'm buying this deal for sure. Okay, because I'm just going to sweat out the, the bad loan. When the bad loan's gone, this fucking property's going to be worth a lot of money because it's 823 right. units. We bought the deal for 50, I think it was $53 million. I put, uh, no, it was 60, it was 63 million. I put $5 million down. That's all I had to put down. It was $58 million loan. I'm like, I'm still in this thing. Everybody's like, you're fucking crazy buying this. To me, I'm like, I'm stealing this. I'm buying 800 units for $5 million, okay? I just got to sit out with this shit loan. So I buy the deal. I'm in the hospital when the bank is supposed to give me the stamp. I had this heart thing happen to me, a ring around my heart, some kind of virus, right? And so the Sunday night, uh, I tell my wife, I said, I think I got to go to the hospital. I can't, I can't do this. 10.30, I try to put it off. 11.30, I got, I'm like, I think I got to go. Was it like a rat of coffee? And shit? No, no. It was just pressure, dude. Pressure on my heart, you know? And so I'm like, did I eat something bad? You know, and like, like 4.30 in the morning, I said, fuck it. I got to get out of here. She was with a kid. We had a kid at the house that was sleeping. So I drove to the hospital by myself. It was one mile away. I didn't know if I was going to make it. I get to the hospital. 8.30 in the morning, I'm still in there. They want to hit me up with morphine and shit. I'm like, I can't, dude. I can't. I got this meeting coming up. And I got to get out of here. And they're like, you're not leaving here today. I said, I got a group coming in here to approve me for $58 million. They got to know I'm healthy. So I got to leave, guys. They're like, you're not leaving. So I pulled everything out, got in my car, <laughs> drove to my office. This is a true story, man. Drove to my office. Okay. These guys are already in my office at 9.15 in the morning. I walk in. I'm white. I still have the little green thing. I hide it under right. me. Right. And I'm white. And I'm like, guys, hey, guys, this is where the sales thing does work right so so because i only got one audience right now so i said hey guys look i've been with my best friend i mean somebody i'm so dear and close to i've been with them he's in the hospital he's not doing well and so as soon as this meeting's over with i've been with him all night i'm really worried about him and 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 when this meeting's over with i'm going straight back to him <laughs> They and you were telling the truth. Uh, the whole thing was the truth. And that's what I always, I always tell the truth. Sometimes you can tell too much of the truth. That, that would have been stupid for me to say, it's me in the hospital, right? Because they couldn't approve the loan. Right. We sold that property. We sold that property. The hold on that was 10 years. We sold it 37 months later for uh, $91 million. Wow. That's yeah, awesome. Tw $28 million score. $5 million turned into, you know, $28 million. Got it. Can't do that doing sales training. Right. It's just impossible. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a completely different ones. You know, it's just, they're just different. Yeah. Different models. Yeah, you know? I, like, I like. But you I, made money in sales training and you put it into real estate. Right? That's what yeah. you did. No, that's right. There that you work, go. I work hard. Right. I work. Exactly. And you I work. Right. So, and then, yeah. and then and I move as much money as I can into some asset that doesn't require me to work. Right. So you think right? it's smart for like, that's so that's like a sort of a strategy. You have a business or income. Take all your free cash flow. Just it, Everybody, you should have no money. My financial advice to any young kid is like, dude, invest all the money in yourself first. Every penny. In yourself? In meaning yourself. Educating yourself? Education, brand, clothes, looking good, uh, teeth, whatever, whatever, whatever you need to make yourself feel good about yourself, right? And, and then 
invest in yourself, in your friends, in the, in, in your neighborhood. Like like it, so you feel good when you walk up. And sure. If you need to go to rehab, go to rehab. Fuck, pay the thirty grand. Go there, clean up. You know, if if you've made a bunch of mistakes with people, go pay, go go clean all that shit up so you don't have your attention on it. And then whatever, invest in yourself. And then sooner or later, if you're doing investing the right things, you're gonna do better. You're going to start making more money, at which point you'd want to reinvest in your business. The second investment was your business, your brand, your marketing, your advertising. Then if there's some money left over at some point, there should be. Um, well, imagine that you start to tip with the investment and starts to grow your. Right? Don't buy a house. Right. Don't, don't buy your own house. Don't though. buy a country club. Don't 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 go show your shit off. Don't buy an Hermes belt. Don't buy any of that bullshit. Don't buy watches. Nobody cares if you're wearing a watch. Like nobody cares if you're in a five hundred dollar suit or a five thousand dollar suit. Nobody gives a shit. And take all that free money and throw. Don't go do a retirement account. Do not buy anything on Wall Street. Speculate on nothing. No Bitcoin. Nothing. If it doesn't give you a cash flow next month, do not buy it. And, so and immediate make sure, cash flow property immediately. Like and and don't manage that property because if you're managing the property, then you're not an investor. You're a manager. So have, managers never make money. So have a management company or someone that... That means, that means the property needs to be big enough. Right. Any of your audience can grab my little book for free. I'll just give it to them. What's the... How do they get it? How, how, uh, it's called cardonecapital.com forward slash what, book. What, that, that's put, the put the link up here, cardonecapital.com forward slash book. And it's, it's called just, How to Create Wealth Investing in Real Estate. You can go to Amazon and buy it too. But... It'll tell but you give it for free. It'll, Why go to Amazon? You give it for free. Well, because some people are stupid. So, so some people love Amazon. Some, I, I, I got to get my points. Whatever, whatever you get. So, <laughs> so, um, the, the people should be buying those deals themselves. There, there's a there's a specific unit size. If you stay with that unit size or bigger, you will make money. What if you don't? Li what if you live in a toxic state? Yep. You, you, you don't buy in that no, state. No, though. find somebody that's buying in the. Find a guy like me that's doing these deals and fun with him. Got it. You're on the notes, what's like that's a big The dump. guy I told you about, Ryan Secco, who works for me now, right? Ryan took 400 grand out of 21 properties. He had 21 properties in Phoenix. He said, Grant, what should I do? You should dump them, sell them as a portfolio, dump them, pay your taxes. His, his game was 500. He paid 100 in taxes. Give the 400 to me, put it in this Nashville deal. His money tripled, and he didn't manage the property. His portfolio would have never tripled. He had 1% ownership in a portfolio. And his money tripled, did better than if he'd owned 100% of his own deals. Because what makes money in real estate is the deal. It's the deal. Okay, everybody's studying this number and that number. Dude, it's the deal. If Meaning the, the actual the property, property itself. The property, the property's got to be sick. So, so if you're not buying a great property, you're not going to make money. And what you don't want to do is buy properties that are weak, that when the, when the next contraction happens, those go back to the bank again. Define we, what would, how would you know that though? Uh, so the book. Because because it doesn't provide <laughs> enough cash flow, right? right? It's a, it's how a much cash flow should have positive should it be? What percent has it work? Well, if it doesn't provide you as an individual at least two thousand dollars of free cash flow per month, why, why would you even want to give it attention? It's not worth it. Two hundred bucks. I can go. I can go stand on that street corner right there and get two hundred bucks. Okay. I don't need to buy a piece of real estate to get two hundred bucks a month. That's why I'm saying you either go from flipping stuff, flip flip, get your money, get your money out fast. Grab your money, build up your reserves until you can buy a big deal. You should be putting my first my first real real deal was I put three hundred fifty grand down on a deal. How long ago was that? My, uh, thirty years. Okay, San Diego. And what type of property was it? Uh, it was thirty two units. Okay, Th 30, 38 units. You 38. put three fifty down for how much of a how much was the property? One nine one okay. nine five zero. I hate to say, what is it worth today? Oh, I sold it. I mean, yeah, it's probably worth. 12 or 13 million bucks. But but I picked up 4 million. It's the first 4 million dollars I ever made. So I put 350 down, it became 4 million. That's 11 times my money while I was paid 15%. I was paid I was paid like the the banks are paying 0 0.012 today. So 100 grand makes 120 bucks today. Keeping money in a bank is stupid. Like there it's it's worthless. Like people think people are investing more money in banks than they do themselves. What do you think? You have two kids, right? So obviously, yeah. you know, let's talk about, let's change topics to social media, right? What do you think about, you know, and we use it for business, right? What do you think about it, you know, nowadays for kids and just the whole, everyone's identity wrapped up in like, what do you think about it? What's your, what's your view on it? I think it's a good thing, man. You know. Any downside at all? No. Of course. You know, but but the downside. Expand. The downside. That's what you really think. You know, the downside would be the, the, the parenting, you know. 
So meaning, yeah. Well, I mean, look, I mean, you know, am I watching my kids or am I just throwing them up on YouTube? You know, to, more of me like the, you know one of the things I see. You know, we with this guy um was name uh, Omar, right? And he said he was in high school. He was just devastated because of social media. Like yeah. his his identity was wrapped up in how many likes he had, the yeah. pain, and do you think that's you know what do you Stupid. think about he that? Would, whole, look, if it wasn't for social media, he'd have been he'd have been devastated by how how many people liked him on the on the school campus or whatever. You think it's magnified by social media? No, just what bullshit. He was gonna have problems either way. Like like whatever. It's not a new thing. So you think social media? If you need likes, then you got a problem. I don't need likes. I like. I need money. I understand, but like, yeah, I'm talking about teenage, I need my, kids. I need rent. Kids, I need yeah. rent paid. I don't need likes. Like, I see a lot of guys out there working People, hard for likes. Dude. I know. That's what I'm saying. I, 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 know I don't guys, understand it, but you know that's what's happening. Just, I know guys. It makes sense to me. People I know guys so working cons- for like paying yeah. for likes and comments. Yeah, I don't get it. But but like, what do you think of it? It's just, it just makes sense to me. But why they're doing it? You know what do you think? The whole culture—it's fucking nuts to me. I don't know what's wrong with them. It's nuts, right? <laughs> but you know, who am I to who am I to judge? Well, you have to right. judge. You want your opinion? You know, like yeah, I mean, yeah, to yeah. me, it's toxic. I think. I think it's pretty toxic. These people forget just paying for it. Just like they're so wrapped up. Yeah, yeah, in like, yeah. yeah. You know, I got my hands full. <laughs> you got you got your own things to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Like like I was. Somebody was criticizing me about something. I'm like, you don't think I've you don't think I've had that criticism myself a thousand times online? You mean? Yeah, oh. like like somebody's like, oh, I no, love no, no, the hate. No, no. I dude, I love I'm the like, haters. Guys, 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 <laughs> guys, <laughs> I have my haters. What, what, they how, how do you even have time to criticize me? <laughs> I like, know you like, dude. You, you got t- your hands full. You know, like I, that's I, what I always say. I'm like, just leave everybody else alone. You got your hands full. Well, I think the haters are terrific. Oh, they're, they're awesome. They fucking create ga- yeah, engagement. They're, they're, I love it. I mean, they're, like, they're awesome. it used to bother me in the beginning. I didn't get it, and then I'm like, wait a second, these guys are hating. They're the best, the best ever, right? Yeah. yeah. But you just yeah. keep going, keep making yeah. me money every yeah. day. The haters, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. At least they're saying something, right? How about the uh, how about the 10x conferences? Yeah, Tell me about them. What do you know about them? What have you heard? I don't know anything about it. Please. I don't know anything about them, buddy. How, how do you know? How do you know to ask about the 10 I see it advertised conference? online. And I know that you did. I know. Here's what I know. I know did, some guy. Did don't. you hit my website? No. The only way you'd see my ad is if you hit I, my fucking no, website. You were doing research on me. No, no, I wasn't. I swear to God. It we're was, retargeting you now. You're we all, didn't come out and search you no, out. No, this didn't be like a year ago. Six months ago? I saw it. It was all. Bam. All, everywhere. Everywhere you go, you everywhere. go to Macy's, you go to porn sites. Everywhere, everywhere you go, I never saw you in a porn site. I wouldn't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, tell me about the 10x conference. I don't. I don't know about it. I really don't. You know nothing about it. Nothing. Okay. Now I want to ask you guys that are I'll watching. I'll tell you this. what. I How know. many of you think he's bullshitting right now? Do when I, he says he am knows I bullshitting? nothing. Don't ask him. I, I'm asking your viewers, dude. I'm asking the viewers. You're missing the point. Is I he would, telling the truth? Of course I am. Everybody knows about the 10x. Conference. I. I don't know. I don't Stop know. the madness, dude. Stop the madness. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if it's a, if it's a sell fest, if it's just information. I have no idea what it is. Zero. I know it's successful. Is it's it big or is it small? I assume it's successful. Keep doing them, right? Yeah. But We've I think that, but that business, by the way, see, I don't like that. I don't like the seminar business. I think it's very. Yeah. It looks yeah. a lot easier than it is, and a lot of people they you think people are, you're making money, but you're really not. It's huge expenses. I don't love that industry. Just so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you probably don't do it to make money. I'm assuming. It's not a big money. It's not a. We I mean, we are the only profitable seminar business, right? But it's not in the United it's, States. It's just though. not a really big profit center. Per se. It's great for building okay. brand and stuff like that, but I, I wouldn't say a big profit center. I thought you were asking a question. Are you making a statement or asking? Well, you a won't. Question? I'm trying to pry it out of you. Tell no, me. No, no. I will tell you. Tell we've me done about three, it. We've done three 10x growth conferences. Okay. We should, we should do a cage match, me and you. It, 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 fighting okay, or three rounds, ninety <laughs> days to prepare for it. Who the fuck wins this thing? Who comes out? Huh? Give all the money to charity. Hundred bucks a, a pay per view. It'd be fucking good. A, a physical cage match. Physical, right? really? Yeah. Give ninety days to train. We both get ready. I need it a little bit longer. You know why? I just had. I just had my shoulder. Replaced. Even better. No, even no, no, no. better. Dude, no, I had a metal. I have a metal ball on my shoulder now, so I don't even. Well, I won't. I won't. I won't. Uh, you probably won't touch my shoulder. I won't hit your shoulder. No. Yeah, I would need about a year. Who would sign up for that deal? 100 bucks, pay per view. How many people, how much money could we do? Let's, what? Let's see what we could do. You think you could, we could both promote it? <laughs> we could both a cage match. Do you, you 100,000. I think you we sound like Logan Paul now, buddy. I had Logan Paul on my million. podcast. Would Logan do it with me? <laughs> Logan would kick your ass, I think. Logan's Logan a big, ma- he's a fucking tough dude, Logan. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I'm a little past my prime. I wrestled in college, buddy, but it's been quite some time since I slugged it out. That's why someone. I give you 90 days to get ready. Yeah, 90 days. No, I would need about, okay. no, seriously, I would need, honestly, I would yeah. need about a year for this to heal. Let's do it. Let's set a date. Y'all want to set a date? Yeah. But anyway, listen. How God, old are you? How old are you? Um, I just turned 57. 
Oh wow! Okay, I got, you're older than me. Yeah, so that we could call it the we could the, call the old it the geriatric elderly, the, the geriatric elderly, slugfest, the elderly cage match, <laughs> sales titans, the sales titans <laughs> cage match. Dude, you don't the wolf like, of you Wall don't, Street. Dude, you don't sound like you're really, really into Street. sales, though. You don't like seem to. I don't. Know, you don't seem to have the passion for sales, though, buddy. You're like a real estate dude. That's dude, what you dude, see. Dude, uh, look, I, I honestly, I'm just every, being dead honest. You sound like you're no, much more into real estate sales. Training. Every real estate deal that I'm involved in requires sales. Okay. Buying a piece of real estate requires sales. Right. So I'm in Houston, Texas. I, we, we, we go over there. We had we had a list of 17 properties to look at. Here's a guy we do sales training for right now. So, um, 17 properties we look at. None of them were right for me. They were all for sale. We drive up on this property called Woodway Square. It's right by right by Whole Foods. We stop for Whole Foods. We grab a salad. This is the one we should buy. This is the property. Who owns this thing? We we looked it up. I got to make a cold call. Called the dude up. I said, "Look, man, you got this property, Woodway Square. It's it's the third largest apartment owner in the world." Okay. He doesn't know me from Adam. This total cold call. Hey, Grant Cardone here. You, you don't know me. I don't know you. I know you own this, and I know you tried to sell it right. eight months ago. I want to know what it takes to buy this deal. You tell me the price. You tell me the terms. You tell me the closing date. You tell me whatever you want, however you want the contract to look, I will give it to you. Mm -hmm. This is a technique, by the way, to lay down, okay. to surrender, to white flag. Whatever you want, okay? We, con we, we contracted that deal. We closed that deal 60 days later. That was a sales job. I had to convince somebody that didn't know me to sell something that wasn't on the market. Right. So, so, so you see what I'm saying? I mean, that wasn't no, but go back to 10X for a second. Tell me. Oh, you didn't tell me about 10X. I don't know about 10X. Okay, we've done three 10X growth How conferences. How many people speak there? Is it like... We had... Our first one, we had 2,200 people there. We sold How many it. people? Speakers? Like, what type of speakers? I'll tell you in a second. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, we had 2,200 uh, people at our first event. Because you said they're not profitable, and that's not true. They that's are. not what okay. I said. I said the seminal world, okay. I said, is not okay. profitable, okay. typically, okay. right? Okay, good. So, so, you're right. You're right. So, so... I know I'm right. Because okay. I've been there. Good for you. 2,200 yeah. people. Not... The seminar world you come from, yeah. but not the one I live in. Okay. That, that, that goes okay. back to the average business okay. and all that. Keep bullshit. going, keep so, going. So right. 2,200 <laughs> people, it took 77 days to market the deal. And there was, I think there was 12 speakers at that event. Maybe, maybe 14 speakers. Second event was 10,000 people at Mandalay Bay. Uh, that took about 10 months to market. Very, very financially successful. Like, okay. It was extremely. I would do that. And what type the of speakers are they? About, what type of speakers, third one, The third one, some of them are good, some of them aren't. Now what do they teach? What are they, them are great. What are the they third, teaching, though? The third event had 34,290 people at it. 34,000. And where was that event? Marlins Stadium. Okay. So Steve Harvey was there. He, he gave inspiration. He was awesome. He wasn't there to, to, to help people on a business strategy. So is it, is it teachers, so, like business, sales, yeah, yeah, marketing? It's, 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 it's marketing, a lot of marketing, e-commerce. Okay. okay. We're, we're, typically, it's partnerships that we have with people that we're, we're working with other guys, and we want to kind of show this audience a specific thing that we want to do. Got it. And you do more of them? Yeah. yeah we'll, do, we'll, we'll do one of those a year, one big annual one, but, but I got guys that want me to do local, smaller events. Got it. When's the next one? The next one is February. Where? Mandalay Bay. We're going okay. back there. Big one or small one? Small. How big is, how small Thir is? 13,000. 13,000, yeah. small. Yeah. Okay. It's really more like, like I wanted it to be more like a concert and, 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 and where, where, there's, where there's artists and business, you know, coming together where people feel good, but there's no rah-rah, there's no, there's no jump up and down and get excited. You're forced to do anything. You don't have to rub anybody off or... You don't have to do any of that shit. So, did you ever get into any of the whole self development world, like the Tony Robbins side of it? No, no, no. I just did a deal in Atlanta. Tony, Tony did the first day. I did. I closed. He opened and I closed. No, did you ever go with like that whole? No, ever, uh -uh. Get, no, is no. It, no. I've, I've never. You know what I've done is like you give me a book, and I'll, I'll I'll shred a fucking book apart. Like, like I'm looking for gold in a book. So I'm looking at every page. I'm looking for gold. Did you read not, my book? I, I, I haven't. I haven't. I oh, haven't. you haven't? No. You think how many people think you're true? My audience think he's lying. <laughs> yeah, you should read. It's a good how book. How many people? What? <laughs> think you're telling the truth right now? He didn't read Do you guys book, think right? you should get him to comment? It's a great way to comment, <laughs> guys. You guys think I'm telling the truth or not? Did I read? Did he his read book my or book? Not? Yes yeah. or no? Yes or no? I think he did. Think? It's okay. You it, think I did? It's a, good, it's a good. It's a fun book. You should enjoy. You, should, you would yeah. enjoy it. I think you would. Okay. But. You, I don't think you really care about selling anymore. You're a real estate guy, aren't you? Come on. I don't know. We, we, seem, we, we seem to sell a lot of stuff. You know, we'll do about $150 million, uh, in revenue. 
What's the big t- for you? The, when, the future. When, when my, my profit and loss statement comes. I'm like scratch revenue out and put sales. That's all that is. Future of the business in, in turn for you is what real estate. Keep your business going with sales training, marketing, sales and marketing training. Just sales training or both. Cardone University, right? Is it sales training, marketing training? It's both. Both. Yeah, well, because you know you're not going to have one without the other. Okay, and then Mar- your- marketing is more important than sales. Where do you see yourself in five years from now? Doing what? Same thing or bigger? Same thing and bigger or something else? Five years from now? Same thing and bigger or something completely different? No, no. I'll, I'll just. Say, I mean, I, I don't get. Re- I don't stop doing what I'm doing. Like I wouldn't. The, the, all, all the lines that we have in the water right now, they're working. So I'm not going to pull those up. Uh, somebody's going to run them. I don't know where I'm going to be. Maybe, maybe I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to have a messed up shoulder pull, because pull. that cage match we're in. <laughs> you don't want to get in the cage with me, pal. You don't think so? I don't think so. Would you guys buy a ticket? That's all I want. <laughs> yeah, that's all I guess yeah. about. <laughs> Let's go. See, and you think I'm not interested in sales? <laughs> what am I doing right now? Let's sell it. Dude, you're like Don King. <laughs> huh? Let's do it. Dude, listen. Thank you for coming on. No, thank you for having me, man. Appreciate you're, it. Well, you're an awesome, dude. Thank you. Thank you. And I wish you nothing but the best. Yeah. And, and I, actually, listen, and if you ever do a, a 10X conference I'm in the area, I will come for sure. Yeah, good. Love to. Love right, to have you. Love take to care. Have you. Guys, take care. Another episode of The Wolf's Den with the man, Grant Cardone, who wants to have a cage match with me. All right? Dude. That will get some traction. <laughs> take I care. I guarantee you.